Atlanta. Are you there? Oh. Hello. <laughs> Two minutes.
Good morning, and welcome to worship on this beautiful morning. You know, with numbers rising this week, of course, there was the conversation about whether or not we should still be doing this, and we'll continue to assess things, but on Thanksgiving Sunday, it just seemed like we needed to be here together. Are we actually live, Cindy? I didn't get the notice on my phone. That's okay, we've been live for 15 minutes. We've been live for, hey, nice to see you all out there. <laughs> um, so a few announcements as we start. Our, our Wednesday evening discussion this past Wednesday with Junia and Joplin was absolutely amazing. Um, it was recorded and the whole series will be available, of course, for a fee online eventually. And if you'd like to join us this week as we learn more about Indigenous rights, we'd uh, be happy to have you. And if you haven't, um, I think you go to Eventbrite, but it'll be on our Facebook page, the instructions. Um, with the change in numbers, I'll probably be working mostly from home again. Uh, to be absolutely honest with you, I find it incredibly lonely in this building without people passing through. And I'm not very creative sitting in a desk in an empty building, so you'll probably get more out of me if I um, work mostly from home. And because we'll all probably be isolating a little bit more over the next few weeks, um, we're going to resume our Wednesday morning chat, so if any of you want to just be part of a group to touch base with one another on Wednesday mornings, if you don't get our Friday emails, let me know or let the church know and we'll send you the, the link um, to that. As well, Saturday morning chair yoga was supposed to start this coming Saturday. I think it's a 45 minute, 10, 15 to 11 on Saturday mornings. Um, with online on Zoom, um, a great bargain as well. But we only have, I think, four people, maybe six now, and we need 10 to make it viable for the instructors. So if you're interested, send me an email, and if we get up to 10 by the end of the week, then I'll send you the link to, uh, to the instructor. Uh, even if you don't have your own garden, this is the weekend when we give thanks for the abundance of the goodness in our world. So as you peel your potatoes and turnip and cook your squash, give thanks to the creator of the sun and the rain that make everything grow.
I was just saying good morning to um, on my phone to those who are joining us um, online this morning, and I uh, attempted to post some symbols for my sermon this morning, and I think I posted a uh, pink flamingo instead of a red cardinal, so sorry. I, I just can't see my, those little things on my phone very well, so I'm not going to be talking about pink flamingos this morning. Come now in the midst of all that is challenging in life. To look for signs all around us of God's presence and God's goodness. Open your hearts, your minds, and souls to the multitude of ways that God appears to us, speaks to us, and assures us of his love and grace. Let us pray. Ever-present God, the story of your people is a story of a God who will never give up until his people find hope. Time and time again, you have guided your people through fear, loneliness, famine, persecution, never turning your back, but encouraging them always with your love and grace. Remind us that your promises of old are still promises for your people today. You will never abandon us or turn your back, but rather will be our faithful companion through all of life's challenges, joys, and struggles. God is an ever-present God, longing for wholeness for all people. Trust in God's good promises. Look for signs of God's presence all around. And rejoice in the good and steadfast love God offers to all. Our psalm reading this morning is another reminder of God's deliverance of the people of Israel, reading from Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. And then reading again the story of Moses this morning from Exodus 12, verses 14 to 20. In his instructions to the people of Israel, we understand the importance to this day of the keeping of the Passover. This is a day you are to commemorate, for the generations to come shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. For seven days you are to eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, remove the yeast from your houses, for whoever eats anything with yeast in it from the first day through the seventh must be cut off from Israel. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly and another one on the seventh day. Do not work at all on these days, except to prepare food for everyone to eat. That is all you may do. Celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread because it was on this very day that I brought your divisions out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word. Let us pray.
Gracious God, for so long you have been the faithful God who has led your people through periods of wilderness wanderings, through periods of doubt and fear. Remind us, O God, that you are the same God who is with us today, the same God who promises to always be by our side, wandering with us through periods of fear, loneliness, and trial, promising there will be new life to come. Amen. So those of you who um, are my friends on, on Facebook, and I, I should say a word about that too. I never ask anyone in my congregation to be my friend on Facebook because I don't want to presume that they want to do that. But I will never turn down a request from anyone in the congregation. I may da turn down a request from some of the weirdos out there in the world who ask, but uh, never from anyone in the congregation. So those of you who um, are friends with me on my Facebook page will sort of know where this story ends, but I won't share that with you as I begin. So as much as I love symbolism and metaphor, I'm not one of those people who thinks that my dear departed relative is visiting me whenever I see a cardinal. Butterflies are beautiful and a lovely symbol of new life, but again, I've never thought of them as visits from beyond. But Thursday this week, after a long day of tidying up lots of work things, I was headed to buy groceries, listening to the six o'clock news and feeling that sort of unique combination of stress, anxiety, frustration, fear that we all experience these days. Bemoaning the fact that I was just emerging from the last shutdown and now maybe would have to turn around and head back into my cocoon, when there against the darkened sky, and the sky was black in the east, appeared the most magnificent rainbow I have ever seen in my life. It was literally as if someone had painted it onto the darkness with vibrant colors. And the distinction between each color was so clear, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Now, if you think I'm exaggerating, let me tell you, People were stopped dead at traffic lights and not moving when the light turned green. And people were actually pulling over on Dundas Street and getting out of their cars right in the middle of traffic to take a picture of this rainbow. It was not my imagination that this was the best rainbow ever. And when I got out of my car at the grocery store, a fellow who was getting into the car next to me looked over and yelled out to me, take a look at that. It's our lucky day. And my sermon was born. I was really struggling with how to talk about the story of the Passover this week. It's one of those really complicated stories. Good news for the people of Israel, but horrible news for the Egyptians, losing the firstborn in all of their homes. Is that really the way God operates? Are some blessed at the expense of others? Those are some of the questions my atheist friends and family members love to throw at me, and I confess it's hard to come up with an answer when the faith that we claim as our own and the faith upon which ours was founded both tell stories of a God who favors chosen people. So now, having raised that issue, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to put it 
aside for today, and we'll pick it up later while we're working on our Moses theme. But given the appearance of that remarkable rainbow this week, I want to talk a little bit about the importance of reclaiming the symbols of our faith. A couple of weeks ago, my youngest son's Jewish girlfriend, who was supposed to become my daughter-in-law yesterday, told, and they didn't break up, by the way, it's the whole COVID thing. Um, she told me that she had decided she was going to start observing Jewish holidays. When she first started dating my son, she was so excited to finally have a Christmas tree <laughs> that I felt perhaps she was turning her back on her own heritage. So it seems that she has finally heard not just my own urging, but I imagine that of her grandmother who is a Holocaust survivor. There was a point in my life, in my faith, when I was actually envious of our Jewish friends because their faith is so rich in symbolism and in tradition. And then I realized that the issue with us as Christians is not that we're lacking in symbolism or tradition. We just sometimes neglect to celebrate those symbols and those traditions. Now maybe it's a little hokey and keep an eye on me because I may be watching the timing of those cardinal visits with more interest now. But that rainbow on Thursday really spoke to me. After our Wednesday evening conversation with Junia Joplin, it spoke to me, of course, of inclusion and acceptance, but it really spoke to me most clearly of the promise of our God that the earth would never be destroyed again. Now, I'm not going to su suggest that God is going to swoop down and take away this virus from us so we'll wake up to a dried up pandemic tomorrow as much as we wish that would happen. After all, we do know that freedom from slavery to Pharaoh was by no means the end of the suffering of the people of Israel. But that rainbow reminded me that we trust in a God who is omnipresent, not isolated from his people, but very present to us, weeping along with us, feeling our pain, encouraging us, guiding us, and most importantly, assuring us that there will be a new tomorrow. Rainbows, crosses, lilies, butterflies, symbols new and traditional that bring us back to that central message of our faith are perhaps especially important to us right now as we feel maybe like we had just started our journey through the wilderness and we were thrown right back to being held captive by COVID. And so I urge you this weekend, as you think of those things for which you are most thankful, to include a word of thanks for all of those times in our life, all of those things in our world that could have destroyed us, body, mind, and soul. Things that have passed over us, not because we're deserving of reprieve, but because we have a God who gives us strength to endure, strength to wander through those times of wilderness, pain, turmoil, and grief, not able to see the end of the journey, but trusting that there will be a land flowing with all good things. 
Express your thanksgiving this weekend for a God who has saved us from absolute despair because we refuse to give in to the forces of evil in our world. Give thanks that you are chosen, as is each person birthed on this earth, chosen to be set free from despair, to be people of hope, and courage and chosen to share that message of love, forgiveness, and grace with others. We have been given an awesome gift during this pandemic, the gift of time. Time for self-reflection, time for meditation, time for prayer, Time to draw closer to the one who gives us the courage to wander through these wilderness periods, trusting in the hope of a new day. <clears throat> Try not to waste that precious gift, but instead remember that one day when life returns to normal, you may become frustrated again with the hectic pace of life, by never having enough time just to be. And it's possible you might look back on this period of your life and wonder why you didn't celebrate it for the strange gift that it was, a gift freely given to us just waiting for us to open it and to give thanks. Okay, now I must confess that yesterday, when I was taking a reprieve from the two days of preparation for a dinner that probably took my kids five minutes to eat, I was sitting on my back porch thinking about my mom, which is fairly rare for me, not because I didn't love her, but because she developed Alzheimer's when I was 30. And so we didn't have that time to bond as adults. And there on my neighbor's roof, right beside me, landed a cardinal, a female cardinal. And rather than taking flight, when I turned to watch her, she sat and talked to me for the longest time. I think I'm a convert. Thanks be to God.
will be there Lord there's not much more we need to hear than that is there that could have been my sermon actually one line beautiful and again I need to say I know they say this often but music plays such an important part in my whole life I just want to say thank you to the three of you Melissa is in Ottawa this weekend with her family, but we are so incredibly fortunate to have these soloists in our midst. So as I was preparing the usual Thanksgiving feast, which I called this year our drive-through dinner, as literally my kids pulled up, rolled down their windows, and I tossed the uh, Thanksgiving dinner in their car, I was overwhelmed with my own good fortune. I live in a lovely little home. I co-own it with the bank still, but it's mostly mine. I have more than enough of everything I need for myself and my family, and I'm surrounded by love and grace. And I thought to myself, because we're talking about Old Testament symbols and norms these days, I could easily give away 10% of all that is mine 
and still have more than enough for myself. That's all. Thank you to all of you for your gifts both to this church and to the people it serves in our community and in the world. because I, I love uh, John Rutter, who um, wrote our anthem this morning, and you'll find some of the lyrics from that anthem reflected in our prayers. Let us pray. Creator God, in the midst of all that is worrisome and trying and wrong in our world, we pause to give you thanks for the gift of creation. In love, you created our world and all that is in it. And yes, you created us, your faithful people, to be custodians of your precious creation. And sometimes instead of being grateful for that gift and that privilege, we have squandered your good gifts and we have wasted your resources. But you are a gracious God. And so you remind us again and again to be humble, to give thanks, to be diligent in the tasks we have been given and to trust in you for the needed courage and strength. Never let us forget that you are the God who delivers your people from being held captive, captive to people, to attitudes, to circumstances that would destroy our spirits, souls, and bodies. We pray for those who even today are wrongly imprisoned, those who are victims of human trafficking, all those whose bodies, minds, and spirits long to be set free. May we never forget our calling to speak out and to act against all forms of oppression and greed. And may we never forget that you are there, O oh God. You are here, the one who never changes, the one who was with Moses and Aaron as they answered your call to lead people to a new land filled with promise and hope, the one who is with us always as we live our lives in service to you. 
Grant us strength even in the midst of wilderness wanderings to serve you and to share with others the hope we find in you. In your name, O God, we ask it as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. It's a relatively new Thanksgiving hymn, and what I love about it is it takes us past simply giving thanks for the harvest to giving thanks for all of those things in life that we too often take for granted. So go now with hearts full of gratitude for all of the blessings and privileges we enjoy in this life. Go with resolve to make our world a better world, not just for those we love but for all people and going go knowing that each of us every one of us are part of god's vision for a better world <laughs> <laughs> 